so next we'll discuss uh, the first type of the access control um, which is the first type of the access control approach which is the DAC the discretionary access control um, it's one of the many access control methods which secures information systems uh, it's a method that grants users control over the permissions to their resources um, hence it enable information system and data owners to decide <clears throat> who can access the respective resources with uh, which level of access right? I mean with what level of access they can have uh, this approach supports the principle of least privilege now a concept that advocates for giving users the least amount of the access uh, necessary to perform their work uh, we just discussed the, mm, the concept of the least privilege um, mm, mm, so it, it, it is based on the principle of least privilege giving users the least access possible to complete their work uh, it's an approach uh, in which administrator determines who should have access uh, to a given resource and grant permissions based on, um, on those needs um, it's, it's very fundamental uh, type um, it's a scheme in which an entity may be granted access rights uh, that permitted the entity by its own violation to enable another entity to access some resources often provided using the access matrix so basically there, there, there are two dimensions one dimension contain the subjects the, the users are the, the, the claimants of that information and then the other uh, row on that matrix will contain the uh, mm, the access rights basically on those objects um, so mm, uh, each entry in the matrix indicates the mm, each entity in the matrix indicates the access rights of a particular subject for a particular object so basically in that table you have the users on one side uh, objects on the other side and the, on the inter intersection each cell in that table will basically provide the uh, mm, mm, particular level of access in that uh, so it's mm, mm, it uses the access control list acls so basically those matrices with the users and subjects and their permissions those become the um, uh, they become the acls the access control list so the this is the subject uh, and subject is an entity capable of accessing objects so there are uh, three classes in dac owner group and world Object is are the resources being accessed or controlled or through uh, to them you know, access is being controlled It's an entity used to contain um, or receive information So access right ACL in that sense uh, um, The contains either user or predefined group of users and their corresponding access levels here the third column so those access levels could include read write execute delete create and uh, mm, mm, search and basically it could allow a person to view modify or run up application as well so this is this is that uh, um, uh, access control structure in DSE discretionary access control so here we see that there are users so there are there are users users are listed over here um, and then there are resources which are the objects so users are the subjects uh, resources are the objects and these um, mm, mm, permissions are given over here for example imagine a user attempts to open a file share on a network when the user requests access the DA system checks the authenticated information and compares it to the ACL associated with the resources that user is attempting to access so basically whether the user B in this case could mm, try to gain access to the file one um, which it has only the read permission so the system will check whether the read permission uh, could be granted or not um, and then accordingly um, so, so basically it's it's the um, the DAC will check the authentication formation and compare it to the ACL associated with those resources if that formation matches that entry so if it's the read access the user is granted the access um, and if it's for example in this case if user B on file 1 is trying to get a write or modify um, access um, uh, so it will be it will be denied La write modify or any other information will be denied so only permission that the user B on file 1 um, and the on file 1 has the read so here is the step-by-step -step process the summary of this 
process from the resource creation to the enforcement someone creates a resource uh, in this case the user a b or c could create a resource such as fire or folder and then the creator you know, is now the owner who can control access permission so basically in this case the owner can grant permissions so whatever is uh, uh, creator has created so basically it becomes its domain to allow permissions and so on so that owner uh, basically configure the these permissions um, these ACLs for these uh, just created resources, assigning them users and groups who should have access with which level of information. And once that this table has been populated, our users have been granted permission to the resources and mm, the and whenever there is a new type of access, it will be um, it will be verified with the um, uh, with the entries in the access control list. Uh, so basically it checks the user information in the request align uh, with that ACL either it's a match or no match if it's a match it, it, it is approved if it does not uh, match then it's uh, denied depending on the entry and these decisions uh, in DSC or discretionary access control systems um, are enforced in the real time allowing users to view modify or you know, run the resource requester so long as the corresponding ACL are the DSC based rule set or the permission set or the access control list ACL permits that action. So this is the summary of the whole process started from the creation, um, assigning resources, populating this table to the users and group and then uh, the uh, then specific, uh, then the implementation. So basically implementation in this case uh, would require uh, the, mm, the different it could be in, it could be in different formats. So for example, it could be in this structure over there uh, mm, where the uh, the from the file uh, it's a mm, it could be a link list or the access control list for files or it could be a capability list for the files. Mm, so it requires planning along with consideration of your existing security policies. Um, mm, mm, as the resource owner for enforcing permissions must ensure they do so in compliance with uh, company or departmental expectations. These steps are um, key to implement DSC effectively um, and ensure that those are uh, properly uh, maintained. So that's one way um, in which um, those could be uh, maintained. So in that um, you, you can define security policies uh, where which establish clear access control policies for your organization or department uh, with with the with the um, clear determination that who has access you also need to classify resources or the subject or the objects in this case uh, you can categorize them based on their sensitivity and importance this is this is essential to ensuring all these acls are appropriately assigned to the resources especially those who are confidential or highly sensitive where access must be um, carefully controlled and then it, it also requires uh, the mm, 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 creation of this authorization table so basically all these entries um, uh, should be properly um, made by setting up users and groups um, it could create and manage user accounts and groups used to assign DSC permission and ensure you organize user and groups in a way that aligns with the access control policies and then the um, configuration could be done using this. So it could be in a tabular form, leak list form, capability form. So these are the different ways to implement uh, this because the the those that table cannot be directly um, implemented. So you need to you need a way in which uh, you can translate those rules, access control list for sub different subjects and objects, and could be compared in during the runtime during during the um, uh, when whenever there is a particular type of request. So once you have properly defined them, uh, then the, the it's it's not only essential to just define and implement that. It's also important to conduct regular audits of those excesses. Um, you need to period, periodically review and audit DSC policies to ensure that there are no non-compliant situations. Basically, there might be some loopholes in those tables, some un some entries which could provide unauthorized access and so on. So if you are able to identify those type of entries, uh, those non-compliant permissions should be properly investigated, 
those should be documented and updated to align with the um, DC policy. The appropriate changes should be made um, as the result of the investigation, whatever the uh, investigation is. You also need to implement uh, training and awareness programs where you will educate users about the importance of DSE as we mentioned in the authorization topic as well that you need to educate users what are the policies on password reuse, what are the policies on the uh, um, uh, multiple uh, login attempts and, and how many login attempts in total in number are allowed and so on. So you need to, um, uh, similarly you need to implement a training and awareness where uh, the, uh, the you need to educate users their role in maintenance effective DSC implementation and what are the consequences what are the uh, consequences if the users are not complying with the access control uh, policies so um, the this this is one of the basic form and then the extended form um, matrix could be defined where there is the same category for the subjects as well then you have the other objects such as files uh, processes, disk drives, and then subjects and um, their uh, permissions on these users are granted accordingly uh, from um, this list. Uh, the the organization of the access control function so basically this figure shows you that how the subject places that request how the access control mechanism um, would verify those and then uh, basically it could be the grant or deny what type of request is this and then based on that those uh, resources are uh, either um, allowed access or those the, the access is denied um, so basically the access is granted or uh, denied to uh, the system. So this, 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 this is another form uh, which shows the mm, uh, different type of commands. There, there are rules that who will control what. Uh, th there are some limitations over here as well. Uh, the, it, it also offers flexibility and user discretion where you can define your controls, authorizations and operations. Um, it has some limitations and drawbacks as well. For example, the entries over here um, are reliant on human judgment. Since DSC relies on the resource owners uh, to for make these rules and authorizations, uh, there could be some misconfigurations over here as well. Um, in the, the misconfigured ACLs or misunderstanding of the security requirements which can lead to uh, data exposure and unauthorized access into the system. Um, that's one uh, limitation of these type of uh, access control systems. Second, they are not scalable. DSC is not scalable access control method. It can become time consuming and complex to manage access for many resources and users. You see there are few rules for few commands. And remember if there are hundreds of users and hundreds of um, resources or objects which need to be protected, you will need thousands of entries for thousands of entries to protect these type of... Um, mm, mm, so, so it will become time consuming and complex to basically manage that. And, and, the, and the troubleshooting is even more difficult in these type of cases so that's the another drawback mm, it lacks centralized administration uh, because access is applied to the resource level each authorization each rule uh, for on, on a subject and object so this makes it difficult to enforce specific security policies across an organization and um, and, and the uh, basically uh, for different subjects and objects and it also increases the insider threat risk um, because DSC does not provide adequate protection against the insider threats where authorized users might misuse their privileges to access or steal sensitive data. Grant and authorized users permissions are disclosed information to the, uh, to the unauthorized parties over there. So therefore these are some of the uh, drawbacks that we just discussed that um, it, it's complex. Um, it's not scalable, um, it's lack centralized administration and there, are, there, there, are the, there is a probability of the insider threat risk in these type of the cases. Okay, so it also uses the concept of then protection domains. It's a set of objects together with the access rights to those objects, basically advanced form of the ACLs. And it's, it provides some flexibility when associating capabilities with the protection domains. Uh, and if you think of ACLs, access control list are the access matrix. Aero defines a protection domain. So basically, it's a one complete protection domain. User can span processes with the subset of access rights. 
mm, associations between a process and domain can be static or dynamic. And so in user mode, certain areas memory are protected from use and certain instructions may not be executed. And, and in kernel mode, previous instruction may be executed and protected areas of the uh, memory may be accessed. So that was about the um, DSC. So we discussed some of the basics of the DSC, what DSC is, what are the access matrices, what are the ACLs, what are the protection domains, objects, users and objects, um, um, and what are those rules. So um, next we'll discuss the Unix file system. The, um, uh, it's the, uh, the, the traditional Unix security model is based on DAC. So DAC is basically used by, as I said earlier, it's used by Windows, um, Unix, Linux. Uh, so that enable users to configure who can access the resources that they own because it's, it's the owner who defines the permission in DAC. So each user can control which other users can access the files, Unix files that they create. Uh, this also enable users to grant permissions without involving a system admin. This is the type of security that has traditionally been built into the most consumer operating systems such as Windows and Unix. Um, so um, these are administrated using the inodes. Inodes um, in, in, in Unix, those are the tables. You will see the inode table entries over here. Um, it has information about the honor, last modified time, access time, I know change time, permissions, and the uh, and the file type. So the basically Unix file permission uses an abbreviated simple form of the access control list. Um, and ACL involves attaching a list of every object and that they can do to each file. That's the full level in in Windows. Uh, for example, file may have this ACLs that user A can read, user B can write. Uh, user C can read and user D can read. So, um, so Unix in a sense simplifies permissions by only defining rules for uh, these three kinds of the objects. So they basically there are three groups, the user, the file, the group and the honor. Uh, um, so the in the base it's all done, all the permissions are set here using the inodes. Uh, on the disk, there is an inode table or inode list that contains the inodes of all the files in the file system. Uh, so here it, it's a pointer. So directories are structured in the hierarchical tree. It contains files and other structures. So basically it will show you that the file zip is on index block 19 and then there it will have pointers to the other inodes. As I said, there are three cases mm, the honor class group and uh, other class. So a unique user ID is the unique um, identification bit, three bits each. So user three bits um, and the group three bits read, write, execute, and then there are three bits in the, it's, it's, that's why it's called the minimal type of access control. Um, there are total 12 protection bits, nine over here. Um, and then uh, there's a specific read art and execute permission for the owner of the file, member of the group and all other users, the nine total. And then there are three sticky bits as well. So um, total 12 protection bits, the owner group ID and protection bits are part of the file I node, which we just saw over there. It, th those are bits are uh, maintained in this case. So um, the, uh, the set user ID, set group ID, Steve, when applied to a directory, it specifies the only owner of any file in the directory can rename, move, or delete that file. And then there is a super user is exempt from the usual access control restrictions and has system-wide access. Uh, so you will see those numbers in the in the well in that lab too. You will see there is a related question to the sticky bit and all this. Uh, you will see that those are numbers. There are examples given over there, like for example, what five 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 means, what number seven 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 means in terms of the read, write, and uh, execute access. Um, so all modern Unix systems support ACLs. It's free BSD. OpenBSD, Linux, Solaris, FreeBSD, it's a set FACL command, assigns a Unix user IDs and group. You will use this command in the lab as well. Any number of users could be associated with the file. It could be read, write, execution permission. A file does not need to have an ACL. Um, includes additional protection bit that indicates whether the file has an extended ACL. When a process requests access to a file system object, two steps are performed. Number one, select the most um, appropriate level of the ACL. Step two, 
you need to basically check if the matching entry contains uh, sufficient permission. So these are some of the steps which you discussed earlier as well in the implementation of those access matrices. So here you will see that in Unix, these are just two simple steps. So basically you have the permissions in the node inodes. Over here, what type of permission, those are given by these bits, user group and others. Um, and uh, then the, uh, the he, here is one example. So basically read, write, read, write, group and other permissions over there. And um, these type of ACLs are also used in the um, in the uh, networking as well. So um, uh, basically, uh, the, uh, the the meaning of the regular file in this case. First, let's discuss the files, then we'll move on to the. So R could read the content of the files. W could change the content of the file. X could execute the file as a process. So R W X. Uh, <clears throat> This is for the uh, files that are for read the contents of the file, w change the contents of the file, x execute the file. Um, so the, the generally the first few bytes describe what type of, what type of executable program is this um, in the in the in the file uh, content itself. For the directories, uh, as uh, in in contrast to the files, are what files are in the directory? Basically, it could be viewed, it could be seen. W, um, the add, rename, or delete uh, from the directory. X, stat the file. So it can basically view the file honor sizes. You can do the cd change directory command into that directory, and uh, you can also do the access uh, files. And T, in sometimes it's used instead of the X, which means the sticky bit um, over here um, in, in place of the X, read, write, and X, uh, which um, its write is not enough to delete a file from the directory. In this case, you could also uh, need to own the file as well. As I said, that sticky bits, um, once attached, uh, that means the, um, only the users could, um, the owners could uh, change that. Um, so these are some of the uh, permissions which are um, assigned. So meanings of these letters is uh, simple, um, so, but it changes slightly based on the as we as we just discussed based on the uh, type of the inode. It's uh, the file, normal file, or a directory. Directory in Unix is also considered a, um, a special uh, type of the file. Um, so the, as, as we discussed that these permissions are stored um, in the inode, um, uh, the basically uh, the, the, an inode is a data structure in a Unix file system that defines a file and an inode include an inode number and it defines the location of the file on the disk here and um, the, uh, along with the attributes including the file permissions and the access. Um, so the the you can also view the i number in the Unix by using the ls command. So ls command is generally list command which shows the, all the contents of that directory. But if you use with dash i, then you can view this i node number um, or the i node index into the um, that particular file or directory. Um, it's it's also important to note that these i nodes does not contain the file names. It's a directory that can contains names and point to the i node. Um, it's it's therefore possible to create two names um, which are called the hard links that point to the um, same file in this case. So there is an i node table or i node list that contains i node of all the files in the file system. When the file is open. Its inode is brought into the main memory and um, stored into the main memory um, um, inode table. So basically, if the inode matches the only one file, but data can no access using two different names uh, depending on the on the file, and you can also do the um, the uh, other other follow, follows link based on this. Uh, That's the the content that we just saw. For example, here it's the first information, but it can contains the subsequent pointers as well. As I said, the ls command is used to view that, but you can also do the uh, stat command as well um, to um, uh, to display further information uh, on for, on these i nodes. The, the to in order to change 
um, for example, the, the, the as you need to know these numbers, for example, 770 number uh, in, in terms of the RWX would give the honor and group read write whole access. So you can use the change mode command. CH mode command is very important, which you will be using uh, for the access control in the uh, Unix. For example, if you want to change a uh, permission on a particular file, you can do the change mode 770 and then it, it will give the user and group all the Access. So you can also specify letters and numbers in the change mode command ch mod um, command so this is very important okay so that's um, it for today i hope that this information will be helpful uh, for the uh, lab as well and also uh, in terms of the access control on the unix please let me know if you have questions we'll see you tomorrow